So I was saying there are some people that their sickness has become their identity. I know a few people like that. And Only a few. Yeah, just a few. Um, so <laughs> how do you begin to crack that, to open, to create an opening? It's very simple. For them. It's very simple. The art of change. Change memories. That's it. And a few people I know are not even willing to let me do that because that's they okay. don't want to lose their illness. They that's claim it. to do, but that, they don't. That's okay. Listen, if they die sick, it's not a problem. <laughs> it just makes room for one more. Evolution, right. There we go. Survival of the fittest. Now, yeah, guys, here it is. You have to get the judgment out of this. If you see a problem as a problem, where is the problem? You see it? Now, again... Remember, you know, we talked about this, I think, at level one. The opposite of love is? Love. It's not hate. It's not fear. But the truth is, love really equals survival. Why will I not let go of the pain? Because it is survival. You know, it is survival. That's all it is. You know, it's so strange. You know, uh, we have these programs that hurt us and harm us. But yet in the same reality is that it's also keeping us alive and safe based on a hurt, which is based on survival and based on love. That's the bizarreness of it. You know, you know, it's like, you know, working with individuals, you know, individuals and, I, and we have behavior that, you know, they say they say they want love or they say they want connection. Or yeah, or they say they want health. And so here it is. They want they say they, they really want this. And the reason why they want this is because inside them they have something that isn't this. And if they get too much of this, then they have to go back and, and try to protect themselves. So. The weird thing is things are wired together in their unconsciousness in a way that keeps them repeating a cycle that hurts them. You know, you think about it. I had this woman come in, you know, and I, a matter of fact, I worked with her. Um, she was the first person I ever tapped on. Her name was Amanda, and she had a fear of heights. And I just, with EFT, took about 30, 45 minutes and tapped it down and got rid of it. And then she wanted to lose weight, and she came in, and I did this. And then she said, I want a relationship. I want, a, I want a good relationship, you know? And so I said, well, um, what do you want? You know, you want a good relationship. What do you want? She says, well, you know, I want somebody to love me, you know, because it seems like anybody starts to love me, they end up leaving me. I said, okay, so, but what would you like? She said, well, I would like to have a, a relationship that is meaningful and goes, but, you know, as soon as we get close to this, what's going to happen is, is that they will find someone else. They get bored with me and then they'll go find someone else. I said, okay, but what do you want really? You know, what do you want? You know, the weird thing is the reason why they choose illness is not because they choose illness is because, again, if you understand the mechanics of the mind, if you've had, if you loved someone and you felt love and it was just a one-sided love feeling and you were feeling it you were given the gift of love and it started with inside you and then they left you then all of a sudden you leak love with pain so then you say I don't I don't want love but I don't want to have pain and then you focus on pain and all you get is pain and anybody gets close to you and they start loving you and then what's going to happen you're going to take off running again because you're afraid of love because love equals pain but then you're always wanting love and I said I said, listen, hold on just a second. What happens if you do have love? What if you got love slapping you in the face and you can't get rid of it? You can't, it's like an itch you can't get rid of. It's like it's their skin you can't get rid of it. What's going to happen? She goes, um, life will be boring. I go, what? I said, if you got love and you have all the love you want, what would, would you, you know, because here it is, you know, they're looking for love and now they're hunting for love. And they get close to love, and they get love, and all of a sudden they're bored. Because they're in love with the hunt, not the catch. You know, so I want to be loved, and all I am is rejected. And if you get somebody loves you, guess what happens? You reject them, because you're not supposed to have it. You're supposed to only hunt it. And there's a weirdness to it all. So then again, there's always the missing piece. There's something missing. And I said, if you had love, you know what's really fun about love is that you could have sex anywhere and everywhere. And try not to get caught. 
You can go to beaches and swimming and mountains. And you can do all kinds of things with love. It's better than trying to hunt it and then just throw it to the side. Or better yet, you love it and they throw you to the side. And they'll go to these memories and go, why didn't they love me? I said, because of your shitty attitude. <laughs> Hello. So there's a weirdness to it. So here's the deal. You look for the pain. Make peace with the pain. Make peace with this. Because see, people are sick because illness is protecting them. I'm sick, I don't have to go to school because I have to give a report today. I'm sick because if I'm sick, I can lay in bed and not have to deal with the babysitter who's mean to me. You see the weirdness of it all? So there is the bizarreness to this stuff. And the weird thing is, in it, in the, what you're afraid of, what you, it kills you, it destroys you, it hurts you. And then, of course, you can, you can join join groups to talk about how horrible women are or how horrible men are. Or you can go to the, the suffering of self-suffer, self-defecating, I hate myself program. And there's a lot of groups who have these, these things, you know. Get a tattoo on your face and then wonder why people look at you strange, you know. Or, or you don't want to be noticed and gave 5,000 pounds so people cannot not notice you. You know, there's the weirdness to this all. So it's like it's the two-sided coin. I want it, I hate it. It's like you marry someone you can't stand and love them at the same time. Hello, mama and dad and one pair of shoes. It's weird. So the key to really is going to the memories and noticing the links. There's a link here. There's a fear here. Now here's the weird thing. As I said before, like with, with uh, Mary, Mary who Dr. Roger Callahan tapped on her, who had a fear of water, and she thought I was born with this, she said. I see water raining outside to get high anxiety, water on TV, even to take a bath with a little bit of water, panic. And so Callahan was a clinical psychologist in California, and he would work with her. And so he said, hey, Mary, won't you come to my home? I have a swimming pool. <laughs> now think about it. Here it is. You're going somewhere where all your pain is, all your fear is, your, the snakes, all your ex-husbands and ex-wives, and the person who beat you and abused you waiting here at this home and you're driving there. I bet she was very calm. <laughs> Setting away from the pool, you know, he would drag her to the pool and have her look at this and get look at it and then she just traumatized because of this pain. So away from the pool, talking about the water. She said, every time I think about water, I get a sick feeling in my stomach. Now, by the way, the brain will use its body, your body to make you pay attention and saying, hey, there's something you're not addressing. Mm -hmm. And just, he said, tapping underneath the eyes was a stomach meridian. And all of a sudden she goes, that feeling in my stomach's gone. And so is the fear of water. All right. So she gets up, takes off, running towards the pool. Now I hear this psychologist who has no emotional intelligence says, oh shit, she's going to drown. He starts screaming, stop, stop. And she turns, she goes, I'm not stupid. I know I can't swim. Now here's the insanity to our own fears. You hold on to the fear because you don't want it. And by holding on to it, guess what you get? Over and over and over again. Making peace with the fear sets you free. You're free to choose now. It's free to choose. And that's where the insanity to our own insanities is that I hate it, I hate it, therefore I attract it. My, I don't want the pain, I hate the pain. When I worked with a lady who said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, she was lying. <laughs> and we started working on her and I said, well, how do you know? Well, I'm constipated. Does that mean you're just full of shit? <laughs> and she was, metaphorically. And I started working on it, like I discovered that as we started tapping on the resources, the real cause showed up. Because somehow in her mind, she had a mother that she loved and mom had no time for her. She was a nurse, she was always working. And then she discovered if she was sick, mama was home and there was love. And then guess who gets, she gets to see often in her daily, monthly routine? She gets to see Mama. Even though she's dead, she sees Mama every time she goes to the hospital. 
Isn't that bizarre? Now, consciously, this is not really a very good conscious program. All right? And then we start tapping. She goes, well, if I get rid of this, who's going to love me? Well, 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 if I get rid of this, I'll have to get a job and be responsible. Yeah. <laughs> so again, if the art of change, you notice at the end of it, there are, there are the proofs. You know, being miserable is a miserable place. And there's weirdness to this because, see, you see mom and dad and their, and their love style is finding things wrong with each other. Or better yet, they're, they're griping and bitching about everything. And you see this, and you're, you're a little girl, a little boy, and you watch mom and dad do this. And you say, okay, I love these people. This is how you're supposed to do me. And even if they're not in a relationship, they do it to themselves. You see how we do it? We do it to ourselves.